Hey cruisers, welcome to Friday. Thank heavens, we're so excited to be here tonight making the trusty purple rain recipe. This is gonna be good, you guys. A little bit more of a sweet cocktail so you can dial back the sweetness in your ingredients if you need to tonight. Make it your own, do it however you wanna do it. You can use vodka, you can use gin, you can use whatever the heck you want. Tonight's episode is brought to you by our friends at cruiseline.com where you can find reviews, tips and photos from real everyday cruisers. Just wanna remind all of you that I'm also over on Shipmate app. So you wanna go find Cruise Tips TV, we're all one word over there, no spaces, no dashes, nothing fancy. Add us as a friend, we'll accept your request and we can stay in touch that way. So how's everybody doing? Mr. Cruise Tips TV, how you doing? Good. Hey, if you're new here, guys, please subscribe. If you subscribe during a live stream, something really cool happens on the screen. You get a little kudos, you get a little shout out. Everybody likes a shout out. And huge thanks to all of you who have already given this video a huge thumbs up. We're always trying to improve the YouTube algorithm, right? So that you guys will see our videos, they'll pop into your feed. So give us a thumbs up, subscribe. Let's see if we can get to 100 likes. Hi, Bonya, nice to see you. Hey, Scott. Scott, tonight we are drinking the Purple Rain. This is gonna be a great cocktail. We're gonna get right into it. Mr. Crucifix TV, you wanna put it up on the um, screen for Scott? Um, so yeah, we are uh, making a fun cocktail. I don't even know where I stumbled upon this one, you guys, but it is a beautiful purple drink and I just thought it would be fun to do something bright and colorful tonight. So we are going to start with just a kind of a standard, um, I'm gonna use a little martini glass, a stemless martini glass, and we are going to rim it with some purple sugar because we're gonna get right into cocktail time. Yes, I have been starting the party with a white claw, but if you follow me on Instagram, you know that these don't do much for me, so we're gonna go straight into the hard stuff here soon, but I might top my drink off with it. Not bad stuff, the grapefruit one, by the way, the ruby grapefruit is good. Mm. For those of you who aren't familiar with white claw, it's a hard seltzer. Tastes kind of like a semi-sweet um, vodka and soda with flavoring, but it's only got 110 calories for the whole can, and the sugar is really low, which is why I bought it, because it's only two grams of sugar, and I'm sensitive to sugar, so we always have to watch that. So yeah, let's rim this glass and get started. I have to dry it off a little bit because it is it got a little wet in the freezer. So I'm gonna um, actually rim my glass with agave nectar, because it holds the, um, the sugar a little bit better. Unfortunately, it's kind of dark in color, so it might slightly distort my pretty purple sugar, but we'll just have to use our imagination. I was gonna do honey, but we're running a little tiny bit low on honey. So I've rimmed my glass with some agave nectar, and you can of course just use like lime juice or water or whatever. <laughs> and now I'm gonna dip this sucker into my purple sugar. Which camera are we on? The low one, okay, so here's our purple sugar. Um, if you check out the recipe, you'll notice that we actually um, um, made this purple sugar out of grenadine and sugar and a tiny bit of blue curacao, but that agave nectar is really influencing the color, which is not good. I'm sorry about that, you guys. I should have used honey or lemon, but that's okay. So you can get a general idea for what it's gonna look like. There it is, so pretty. So let's mix this sucker up, okay? Uh, I have to refer to the recipe. I've only seen it once, so I'm not 100% sure how to do this. All right, so Mike, I'm gonna make it a little bit stronger. Mike made this in advance and told me that it can run a little bit sweet so I'm gonna go a little bit easy on the lemonade, or the sour mix, whatever, and a little bit easy on the curacao and the grenadine because I don't like super sweet drinks and Mike knows that about me. So we're going to start with our cocktail shaker here. I've already got it filled with ice. I actually made homemade sour mix. Um, those of you who follow us on Instagram, I know that's the second time I've said that today, but we do fun stuff over there. Um, know that we did the recipe for making your own sour mix last night, which is really easy. But first I wanna thank Joe for the super chat. Joe said, Sherry, I hope you and your family are keeping well and looking forward to new vlogs, hopefully rather than sooner rather than later. Oh my goodness, thank you so much. We are looking forward to that, Joe, as well, sooner rather than later. And thank you for starting this party off tonight. You are such a sweetheart. And I see that we got a new subscriber there too. Was it travel? Travel Tessie, Travel Eddie, yay! Um, Travel Eddie, Mr. Crow Sips TV shows his face every so often. If you stick around long enough, you'll see it eventually. 
He is more of an introvert. I think it's okay for me to say that. Um, but he likes to be the behind the scenes person, but go over to our Instagram page and you'll see him there. And sometimes you'll see him in the vlogs. Okay. But thank you, Travel Lady, for subscribing. Um, let's talk cocktails, guys. So homemade sour mix, recipes on Instagram in my Save to My Highlights, but it's very easy to do. You basically make simple syrup with water and sugar. You just boil it down and then you add uh, two lemons, two limes. So you shake it up in a jar with the simple syrup about uh, the juice of four citrus, a half a cup of water once that's reduced with four citrus, that makes a nice little jar of sour mix that you can keep in the fridge. And oh my goodness, you guys, once you try the sour mix, you're not gonna wanna buy that plastic jug of sour mix at the store for your margaritas or for your whiskey sours. You're gonna wanna use this. It keeps for a long time. And it's also great for mocktails. It's great for lemonade. You can just water it down and basically make it into lemonade. It's so good. So we're gonna be using homemade sour mix to make this cocktail tonight. Um, do you wanna put the cocktail recipe back on the screen for just a moment while I make it? Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and stay on the big camera for a few minutes and I'll just kind of show them the ingredients. So I have my shaker. We're gonna start with one and a half ounces of vodka or gin. Tonight I'm actually using vodka. Guys, believe it or not, I'm out of gin. That's quarantine life for you, running out of gin, right? So, uh, you turn the fan on for me. <gasps> oh, that feels so good, guys. It's 90 in California. What's that? Uh, 90 in California and probably about 82 in our house right now. So I'm loving life. So anyway, here's the first ounce of gin. Let's go for the, the half. I'm actually going to go a little more because you guys know me. Sorry, it's not gin. It's vodka. I didn't mean to say that. And looks like mama's almost out of Tito's too. And we're going to have to get ourselves to the liquor store soon. Um, Sydney, is Purple Rain usually strong? Okay, thank you for letting me know. I'm gonna keep it strong. We're gonna make it strong. Oh my goodness. Oh, you guys, and please join me while we're making this cocktail and wishing Linda in the chat a very happy birthday. Linda, cheers to you. This one's for you tonight, babe. All right, so we got our one and a half ounces of vodka in there. We're gonna use a half an ounce of blue curacao and a quarter ounce of grenadine. So we're gonna go really light on this so it's not very strong. I'm actually gonna do less than the half, I'm probably using like a quarter. So this is gonna be really light purple. This is gonna be light purple rain. <laughs> and then we're gonna use half that amount of grenadine. So I'm gonna go super light on it. Boop. All right. Oh, I hope this is purple. I hope it turns out purple, you guys. I think it might be, a, it might turn out a little bit murky. And then I've got my sour mix here and it says two to three ounces of lemonade or sour mix. I mean, I'm going with like an ounce and a half. And we are already ready to shake, 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 y'all. Let's do this. First, I'm gonna put some ice in my cup so we're ready to pour when it's done. I'm so excited to try this. It's been a long week. I know a lot of you have had the same experience of it being kind of a brutal last couple of weeks. All right, let's shake and pour, y'all. Let's do this. I'll clean things up and here we go. Let's shake it up. Thanks for wishing Linda a happy birthday, everybody. Appreciate that so much. Ooh, this is shaking smooth, guys. What do you think? Is it actually gonna turn out purple? <laughs> Darlene, you're welcome. We're so happy to be here and thank you for being here. <laughs> oh my gosh, so funny. All right, I think it's done. Mike and Cheryl, I will shake my booty. Let's shake, shake, shake. Oh, I can't shake and dance at the same time. It's not a good, it's not going so well. All right, Sheldon. Long week for you too, pal. Okay, let's pour and then we'll go back up to the main camera. Look how frosty my, my martini shaker is, guys. Is it purple? It's purple! It's so pretty. Look at that and look at that. The perfect amount. And you guys, I did not even taste this recipe. We're gonna garnish it with a little bit of lavender out of the garden. Look at that, isn't that so beautiful? And there it is. I'm very excited to try it. What do you guys think? Except for my agave nectar fail, I think it was pretty well executed. You'd like it? Eee, it's pretty. Look at that lavender. Ooh, gorgeous. I didn't wash the lavender. <laughs> Probably should have. Cheers. Happy birthday, Linda. Thank you guys so much for being here. I know it's been a few weeks. We're super glad to be back. Sydney, do you think it looks good? Do you approve? Good, okay, good, I'm glad you guys. Ooh, Michelle's doing fireball and apple juice. Tastes like apple pie. Yum, what a great combination, the cinnamon. Well, I always get accused of not drinking this fast enough and I'm too chatty, so I'm gonna stop talking, start drinking. That 
That is really nice, you guys. Mike, I definitely took your advice. I'm glad I took your advice because it is a little on the sweet side. So glad that I didn't put more of the um, curacao and the grenadine. You know what actually reminds me, Mike and Cheryl, of the, the deep sea martini? It kind of tastes similar. I mean, yeah, it's probably just the blue cur curacao and the sour mix in there. It kind of like is reminiscent of it. Wow, that was really nice. I love it. Yeah, it's a nice martini, guys. It's kind of a sweet one. Yes, Marcy. I did wear my purple lipstick on purpose tonight. <laughs> to match it. I wanted to do that. I wanted to match it. It was kind of a silly thing to do, but um, this lipstick is kind of bold, but I wear it on occasion. Mm. So the problem with being on camera is that when the sugar gets all over your lipstick, I get kind of obsessed about it. So I'm kind of wipe the sugar off there. There we go. Now I can relax a little bit. All right. Sugar everywhere, you guys. <laughs> Thank you guys again for wishing our Linda such a wonderful happy birthday. All right, we're up to 68 likes. Nice work, you guys. We're going to get to 100, no problem. Angie said, I was just listening to the CTTV podcast and I saw this. A lot of sherry today in my life. You can never have too much sherry in your life, Angie. Thank you. I always like days when I get a lot of Angie in my life too. A DM, a comment on our Facebook post, whatever it may be. I always appreciate it and always enjoy talking to you. Um, and I hope you guys are doing well. I know you're bored. I get it. We're kind of bored too. Um, so I have a question for you guys. Um, uh, I have a couple of random life questions I'm going to ask you tonight, and I'll, I might have to read them later if the chat starts going too fast. But Mr. Cruz Tips TV, if you um, have any questions that come up, just put them on the screen and I'll get to them. But here is my, my question for all of you. Um, if you have children, school-aged children, or you're in the education system or whatever, in the state you're in, in the country you're in, wherever you are, are your children going back to school full-time in the fall or part-time? In California, I, I just want to um, say that their kids are probably only going to go back like two days a week. And so it's crazy. People are freaking out in California because they work and they're scared and they don't know what to do and this is just too much, right? It's like extremely stressful. But then I was hanging out on um, Matt at Royal Caribbean Blog's uh, Periscope feed tonight, and he said in Florida they're totally going back full time. So I'd like to know um, from those of you with school age children or family or friends or whatever in your state or country what's going on. Linda with a super chat. You can't do a super chat on your birthday. That's against the rules. We're supposed to super chat you, but you are welcome. It is our pleasure to make your birthday extra special. We always love seeing you here, and I'm so glad that we get to celebrate together. There is nothing better than that. So you're welcome, my dear. Um, Michelle said, Sherry, did you end up thinning out your packing cubes? I could never do it. Okay, so I posted something the other day on Facebook saying that I, during this time of not traveling, I realized I had too many packing cubes, and I was kind of going through my travel supplies. But then Angie and a bunch of other people, a lot of people told me, they're like, do not get rid of your packing cubes. Hold on to them. Just hold tight. So I didn't get rid of anything, but I, I need to clean my closet, you guys. Everybody's been telling me to do a video of my closet, and I have to be honest with you. It is so messy in there that I can't even take a camera in there. I'm too ashamed. There's too much stuff everywhere. Hey, we've got the Sharon at Sea crew in the house tonight. Hi, guys. Sharon, Jamie, and Matthew. I don't know which ones of you are here, but we love you guys. So good to see you. Hello, hello. Hope you're doing great. And yeah, hey, um, Sharon and Jamie, are, is Matthew, what's Matthew's deal with school? Are they going back? Um, full-time or part-time? Let me know, please. Good to see you guys, too. I hope you're doing okay. Oh, and your camping video. I can't wait to, take, wait to watch that. I'm glad that you guys vlogged it because, obviously, we, if, you know, there's that feeling like we've got to do something. That's how we're feeling right now, too. Like, we've got to do something. But um, I can't tell, me, tell you how many people have asked us, are you guys going to buy an RV? Are you going to go camping? And the answer to both of those questions is no. We're not going to buy an RV. We probably won't go camping either because camping in California is kind of lame now. It's like, it's not camping. It's like 5 million people around you and not the wilderness at all. And I would way rather not do that. I'd rather rather just stay in a hotel, right? I know I'm being a diva right now, but it's like, who wants to pack all that stuff? And it's expensive. You know, a night in a campground in California is ridic, you guys. I'm telling you. Darlene has been decluttering and going minimalist. Okay, so Sharon said that the district in Arizona is currently planning on staying home until the next phase. Then they'll be doing half-time school, half-time home. Okay, so it sounds like you guys are like California. 
I'm here in Florida is different. Hi, Jamie from Tucson, Arizona. Good to see you there. Hot, hot, hot in Tucson. I hear it's hot in um, Arizona right now. I think Seth told me it was going to be 108 tomorrow. Woo! Yikes. Crazy, crazy, crazy. I want to see what everybody's saying about school. Anybody weighing in on that yet? Okay, Banya said in Vancouver it might be three days only. Teachers said they find out from the news what's going on. We'll see. Yeah, I feel like that's the way it is. Um, some of the teachers that I know here in the area have said that they've been basically like polled about it. There's three different options. What do you prefer? What do you want? And the parents have been polled, but nobody knows what's going on still at all, which is just crazy. Um, nobody else but Liv said Indiana's going back full time and starting early to catch up. Oh, okay. That's really good to know. Thank you for letting me know. Angie said in Washington State, they haven't decided yet about schools. Generally, the state is taking a cautious approach. Yeah, that's kind of what I've heard. Oh, Mr. Cruise Tips TV, you just got a super chat from Bill Bayungo, and it is earmarked for Diet Coke. Bill, that's going to buy us a lot of Diet Coke. I mean, we can get at least three 12 packs for $9.99, and you know we buy it on sale. You know I'm always like at Target. When I see it on sale, I'm like, you go get six of those, babe, and you put them on the cart. <laughs> We're stocking up, and then we stack up the Diet Coke in the garage. We have like four or five of them out there at all, <laughs> at all times. But I love it when they're like three for $9 for a 12-pack of Diet Coke, and you just stack them up in your garage by the, by the toilet paper and the paper towels. I know you guys can relate. And they gather spiders and all that. Ah, Carrie, so your school district in Santa Maria and Orchid is still up in the air. Okay, see, that's what I'm hearing mostly in California. Irish in the USA sit in Las Vegas full-time online. Wow. That's interesting. Oh, my goodness. Full-time online. Um, Mary Ellen said, we're only in phase two in Connecticut. No indoor restaurants are open yet. Well, yeah. Gotta love this. In California, we had all the restaurants reopen basically like in May for outdoor dining. Then they opened them up for indoor dining and then they shut them down again for three weeks. So we're in week one and a half of complete restaurant shutdown. That is rough on these restaurant owners. I feel so bad for them. Um, hi, Stephen from Australia. Good to see you, my friend. Julia said no decision has been made in North Carolina yet. The governor is supposed to be making an announcement next week. Very interesting, Julia. I'm curious to see if you guys go the direction more of Florida or more the Arizona, California. Um, wow, Daniel, they shut down bars in Vegas, huh? <laughs> yeah, oh no, Beverly. Thank you for the tip on that. I really appreciate it. I know, Carrie, we just need a decision, right? Seth said a lot of people moving out of California. Well, yeah. Welcome to the dinner table discussions at our house. I mean, it's, it's rough, you guys. It's really rough. Um, it's tough because Junior's really rooted here where we live now and has close friends. Otherwise, we probably would have about, what, five years ago? Cut the cord. Yeah, Seth, I'm telling you, Texas, New Mexico, Arizona, Idaho, um, what else? Anywhere else? He said wrap it up, babe. We're not moving. Yeah, we're not moving right now, but um, if it was easier to do, we probably would have already done it. Okay. Um, let's see here. Shannon, okay, great. Shannon's weighing in from Northwest Florida. They're giving three options. You have until 7 20, 20 to make a choice. Masks are not required, and they are unable to social distance. So wait, Shannon, you have to choose? So you're going to have a choice in Northwest Florida? You, so you can, whoa, that's crazy. Hmm. Okay, so JB said San Francisco doesn't know yet, but Marin County schools are opening in the fall. I mean, I think the pressure from working parents in San Francisco, I can see how that would probably be the case. I mean, this is going to be so hard. Um, okay. Oh, everybody wants to know what's wrong with California. It's very, very expensive, guys. Um, it's ungodly how much money we're paying here. It's your house poor when you live in California. The problem is the jobs also pay well. And so, you know, you have that issue. And it's just, 
you know, it's just changed a lot over the years and it's difficult for us to see that. It's become more dangerous, there is more crime. Uh, but it's mostly an issue of just if you want to, if you want to buy in California, those those days are just kind of gone for us. Um, we will not buy in California again, and it's just rough. Anything else you want to add to that? Okay. Um, let's see here. Jenner's Patter said, "I'm near Orlando, Orlando, Florida. I lease apartments, and we've had our doors locked for months. And last week, they decided to start let people in, and it's scary. Yeah, totally. I can imagine that it probably really is scary." Um, okay, so Delaware hasn't decided what to do about school. Ha <laughs> ha Seth said, let's steal that new carnival ship and become Vikings. Seth, that's my kind of topic of conversation. It sounds like we need a topic shift here. Depressing, we're talking about schools and states and all that depressing stuff. So let's take a drink and talk about becoming Vikings and we'll lose our little, um, our little, uh, pretty little lavender there. Seth, you'll notice I did not garnish with rosemary. I did think about it, though. Uh, Marcy wonders how much a teacher's salary is. Um, that's a great question. I'm not sure. I know that I was planning on being a teacher, Marcy, um, and did an internship in my senior year of college and opted not to do it. Part of the reason was the money um, because I wanted more of a business kind of an angle and, and went after that, and it was just tough. But teachers can make really good money. Um, oh, we got a super chat from nobody else but Liv who says, where do you get your clothes? You always look so cute. Being locked down, I'm doing lots of online shopping. Oh, thank you so much, Liv. That is so sweet. Well, thank you. First of all, thank you for the super chat. Welcome to Cruise Tips TV. I'm actually going to show you where I get a lot of my clothes. I get, um, I get them a lot of different places. I do shop a lot at Macy's online and in store in the petites department. I also love Liv. I love Express. But I also love subscriptions or, um, you know, clothing um, sites where you can have clothing sent to you. And I have a huge affinity for Fashion, which is a, um, a clothing styling service. It's basically a styling service. And I'm putting the link in right now. I'm trying to talk and do this at the same time is why I'm losing my train of thought. But Fashion um, curates clothing for you, and they're really super reasonable compared to other subscriptions or styling services. And so I get a ton of my clothes. This is actually from Fashion, what I'm wearing tonight. Um, I always ask them for off-the-shoulder clothes, resort wear, things like that. They do a video call. You and your stylist do a video call, and it's half the price of, like, Stitch Fix. So I love it. And I just put a referral link for you in. You can get $20 off with my code. Um, I know, Michelle, we can't wait until they um, ship to Canada. Seth, I will take that job as the bartender at the Hot Tub Club. I mean, I feel like I've really improved my skills, and I think I would like a promotion. I think I would like to be the bartender of the Hot Tub Club. I think I was just an ambassador before, but now I've, I've worked really hard. I've polished off a bottle of gin all by myself during quarantine. Granted, it has taken me three and a half months, but it was a big bottle. <laughs> <laughs> but it's gone, Seth. It's gone. Boy, guys, life around here at Cruise Tips TV has changed a lot. We're not really talking about cruising tonight, are we? We're talking about school and gin. Oh, that's really good. Kind of um, kind of grows on you. I'm gonna put another ice cube in it. I like that melty, melty martini taste. Um. Oh, Wanda. I love it. Wanda gave us a cruise question. I'm so excited to answer this, Wanda. Wanda Ernstberger said, would you be open to doing a cruise with only ship days and no ports? Six months ago, Wanda, I would have said, no way. Are you nuts? How boring. Now I'd be like, me, 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 me. Sure, sure, sure. Yes, yes, yes. I'd be like the little kid jumping up and down, like trying to sit at the front of the bus. I'd be like, uh-huh, uh-huh. You know what I think they should do, Wanda? <sighs> Look. If Royal Caribbean and Norwegian can collaborate on their health protocols, why can't they collaborate on their private islands? Meaning that what we do, what? That's my idea. Okay, I'm sorry, I stole your idea. You're my husband. I can steal your ideas without penalty, babe. You see this? You see this right here? You got one. He said, I got one too. Okay, so what if they did an... Royal Caribbean, Norwegian, Carnival Group, Carnival Corp, Princess 
All of them. Private islands only. Yes, Angie, it was the Costco-sized gin bottle. Oh, yeah. Do not laugh at me. Come on. Be proud. <laughs> Support my habit, Angie. <laughs> Enable me. Anyway, I'm totally joking. So, yeah. So, Wanda, why don't they do like a thing where it's an all private islands cruise because think about the risk. Yes, you do have local people on those islands serving the cruise passenger, but you're not entering a new country where there's so much risk with ports turning you away and things like that. They have to consider the, the health of the Bahamian people. I Believe me, I'm saying that to be very important right now, but you guys... The cruise lines could do this. They could put their heads together. Don't even start cruising at ports. Just do private island hopping. It would be so fun. Because think about it. You're, you know, you're uniting as a cruise industry. You're, telling, you're saying, look, of course we're competitors. But when things get tough, we band together and we do what's right for our guests. Let's go to Perfect Day at Coco Key one day. Let's do Half Moon Key another day. Let's do Princess Key another day. And then what's Norwegian's Great Stirrup Key? Let's do it all. Wouldn't you be down with that? And MSC Ocean Reserve, of course, like the coolest. With the, It has a lighthouse on it, you guys, of course. So um, this is kind of embarrassing, but I've got sticky stuff on my fingers. It's so sticky that it's driving me crazy, like to an OCD level where I can't handle it. I got a little bit of the sugar and the agave nectar on my fingers, so I had to take a little ice bath. <laughs> Sorry guys, I have to get it off. It's making me crazy because I've, um, I've transferred it to the desk and now every time I touch the desk, it's all sticky. So I'm sure some of you can relate to that feeling of not being able to stand it. Vicki Macron McCree said, isn't it great to see that Majestic Princess is coming to Alaska in 2021? Yes, Vicki, thank you for sharing that wonderful cruise news. It is true, guys. Um, Majestic Princess, which is currently a ship that has been, it was actually designed for the Asia market, is coming on over and doing the Alaska season, joining us on the West Coast. I think it might even be doing some California and Mexican Riviera sailings too, Vicky. And 2021 is right around the corner. Vicky, were you able to find the, um, the itineraries on the website? I popped on to Princess's website the day that it came out and... Um, I couldn't find any itineraries yet. I think it was just too new. So, yeah. Kathy Dunn said, but how would they do the West Coast cruises? Yeah, Kathy, there's no private island options here. They wouldn't be able to. They would just be out of luck. Um, yeah, no way to do that. But maybe someday I could see that a port development project could happen on the Baja California coast of Mexico. There is a lot of open space there, um, and I think that Mexico would be open to that, but I'm not sure. Um, okay, I want to ask you guys another question for my research purposes, and Mr. Cruise Tips TV, please feel free to keep giving me questions. Um, yeah, Peggy, you're right. It's going to be a while. My question for you is, since cruising obviously is not going to resume until at least September, very likely later than that, what other types of travel are you considering or actively pursuing right now? Camping, all-inclusive vacations, um, renting an Airbnb house for a week, going to a hotel somewhere in your own state. What are you doing? Let me know. I'd like to know. Joe said, Sherry, they swapped around the Grand, Majestic, and Regal, hence no itinerary yet. Yeah, okay, Joe, so it's not, it hasn't been announced. Are they sending Regal back to Europe, Joe? I think I saw that they were sending Regal back to Europe. All right, Chevy's in first said, I got good news today. I rebooked my September 5th cruise to next year before Carnival had made the official announcement to cancel. They canceled my new rebooked cruise and will send me a full refund. Good. I'm glad Chevy's in first that that is working for you and that that is a good arrangement for you. I'm so glad to hear that. All right, let's see what everybody's doing. I would like to hear. Um, Isabel's considering all-inclusive. Yeah, we have a lot in common, Isabel. <laughs> Hi, Karen Griffin. Um, Darlene Crone is looking at doing an Amtrak cross-country. Wow, that sounds like a fun trip. Very cool, Darlene. Um, 
Sheldon is doing a road trip to Oregon. Yes, that's right, to see her daughter, right? And then um, Wanda said all-inclusive to Mexico. Yes, Wanda. And I love, Wanda, that um, the all-inclusives are slowly reopening in Mexico. Um, they are doing an excellent job in these all-inclusives in Mexico of sharing how they're making travel safe for you. Really cool videos on a lot of um, all-inclusive websites and Instagram channels communicating their policies, their vacancy percentages, and all the things they're doing to keep their guests safe. It is super encouraging, and that would be the one thing I would consider too. Wanda is an all-inclusive to Mexico. Probably not going to happen just because I think we're going to ride it out, save some money, wait for cruising to come back and just really focus on the money saving element of things. But I think that that will be my first choice too. Um, Michelle said, um, camping or traveling in province. Yes. Staying close to home. Tacos rock is doing what we're doing. Saving some money. Good idea. Okay, Vicki, I'll go check out the websites. Sydney said just a beach getaway or an amusement park. Yeah. Beach getaway is a good idea. Awesome. Generous Patters said, looking at an Airbnb in St. Thomas or St. Martin. Oh, I like it. You're going Caribbean with your Airbnb. Okay. That is super cool. Oh, there's a lot of good ones coming in here. I'm going to try to read them a little faster. Bill said, um, going to Gloucester, Mass. Oh, how wonderful. Mike and Cheryl said, nothing is open, but maybe going to a five-star hotel. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. You guys have a lot to celebrate, too. I think, you should, I think you should do that as a celebration. Linda said, local hiking in lakes. Yay. Sonia's going to Santa Barbara for your 50th. Good choice, Sonia. What a beautiful, beautiful place to go. Monica said, staycation, baby pool, and cocktails in the driveway. Yeah, that's kind of like our life right now, Monica. It's like, I'm sitting in the backyard on my plastic Adirondack chair. With the hose to cool down my feet, pretty much. I love it. Oh, our friend Joe Dura gave us a super chat. She said, oh, New York, New Year's Eve, H-Y-E, and then January 4th. If not then, you have a backup flight to the Caribbean with either right now you have to quarantine, but you can work from home. Thank heavens you can work from home, Josine, and thank you for your friendship. I really appreciate the super chat to your sweetheart. That was awesome. That's a really cute super chat. Uh, um, um, Rebecca, tell me, I don't understand your question. Oh, Sarah, how wonderful. Sarah's down in Australia and is doing, this, is doing the Sydney Opera House and the Harbor Bridge. Seth, you're going to go to Vegas. Yeah, and I've been following your buddy at Yellow Productions, kind of following the reopening over there. So cool. Mike and Cheryl, you call Adirondacks Muskoka chairs? That's so funny. I love it. Um... Darlene did a road trip to Georgia and Tybee Island in May. You needed a beach. Yeah, sometimes you just need a beach day. Amanda, you said you have a house in Tahoe and you can drive there, so you're there now. Oh, Amanda, how wonderful. Oh, my goodness. Tahoe is so beautiful at this time of year, right? Like, the goodness sakes, the, the heat and everything. Crazy dog testing, staying at a hotel in Halifax, Nova Scotia, an hour away from the house, and some camping in Nova Scotia. Ah, so Sharon and Jamie and Matthew, you guys are considering an all-inclusive for just a few days. So you got, where will you fly, Sharon? Um, where will you guys go? I want to know, like, are you thinking Cabo? Angie said, I'm not going anywhere for now, but I do live a few miles from a beach area, and we have been going over there and doing happy hour and whatnot more than usual. I think that's good, Angie. You got it. You've got to do something. Um, for us, last weekend, it was a drive. A 12-hour, a 12-hour, 12-mile drive from our home. We just drove into the mountains. Like, just go to this long road and just see where it goes. And it was fun. And it took a while. It took a couple hours, and we really enjoyed it. And it was something we'd never done before, but you got it. It's like, you feel like you just have to do something, right? Um, okay. Wanda, yeah, Cosmo's so reasonable right now. Joe said, question, if you had to choose a, your dream cruise with no price limit, where would you go and what ship? Um... You're going to laugh at me. But you know what I would do? I would do a world cruise on a nice old school princess ship. I'm with Angie, and we like grand class princess ships. I would go, I would grand, grand princess world cruise, mini suite cabin. I don't even give a hoot if I have a full suite. Just give me a mini suite with a bathtub in it. And, uh, yeah, Joe, that's where we're going. 
I mean, you ha when you say no prices, no, you have to say a world cruise, right? I mean, like, you have to, because then you get to go everywhere. And also, if time off work wasn't, and you know. Um, Seth said, not sure if we're going to Hawaii the next trip in January, so Vegas for you. Shopping and steak. Yeah, good food in Vegas. Oh, so good. Yeah, I know we don't have bars open here either. So Sharon and Jamie said, no definite place yet, but you have a lot of canceled air to use. Oh, you've got to use your air credits. Ooh, that's tricky, guys. But hey, that works. Um, there are some really, really nice resorts open in Cabo and Cosmo. I'm sure you guys are already looking at them. But Cabo is such a short flight. I mean, two hours from the West Coast. And I'm assuming that out of Arizona, you guys could probably... Can't you fly directly to Cabo from Phoenix? So cool. Oh, we've got a super chat from Daniel and Nancy. Did I miss their super chat? I'm sorry if I missed that earlier. Thank you both so very much for everything you do. I appreciate you so much. Uh -huh. And she said, if price is no object, you should go ahead and get the suite on your cruise. You're probably right, Angie, but I don't want to be greedy. And I love me a mini suite, and I would be happy with that. So I think it was my let's not be greedy girl coming out. Yeah, playing golf, Bill, you've been playing golf? That's fun. Oh, okay, I didn't miss Daniel and Nancy's super chat. It was right there. You think that, Joe, you think they're going to sell off the Grand or the Golden? No, I love those old ships. They have those beautiful covered pools. They're so great. I love them. Yeah, Arizona to Cabo, same time zone. That's really cool. <laughs> you guys are so funny. I want to just scroll for a moment. We're probably going to get to um, making dinner here soon, guys. Oh, this is cool. Wanda said, if anyone's interested, the ship show and Sharon at Sea are going to have a meet and greet in Vegas in September. Just wanted to pass it along in the cruise community. Thank you, Wanda. That is super fun. And where can they find that information? Probably on the Sharon at Sea and the ship show Facebook um, pages. That's awesome. That sounds really fun. It's going to be hot in September, but still super fun. All right. Mr. Cruise Tips TV, have we missed any questions? Quiet tonight, huh? Kind of quiet Friday night here. Cool. Daniel, you're going to love Sapphire. Yes, Sapphire um, and Diamond are beautiful ships. I love them. They're also some of my favorites. Steven, when you say I just need a holiday anywhere, that pretty much sums up how I feel all the time right now, my friend. This has really forced us to kind of focus on other things. All right, you guys. We're going to sign off and go make some dinner. It's hot in the house, too, and Junior is, like, in a room by himself right now, so I feel kind of bad. <laughs> Let that kid in the backyard and go make some food. But... I'm going to answer one more question from Chevy's and First. Um, this may sound crazy, but I compare all my cruises to the first one I went on. I also compare the cruise directors. Is, <laughs> is it just because it was my first cruise? Yeah, that's super normal. I think we all do. You, you know, you think about that first cruise, whenever it may have been, and it, it etches so deeply into your consciousness and your perspective of what cruising is, whether that's good or bad. So I think that comparison is very normal. Irish in USA is closing it out tonight with a very generous super chat. Thank you so much. Oh my goodness, that was very, very thoughtful. Thank you all so, so much. Julia, if you're going to book an all-inclusive, Mexico's got some wonderful ones right now, and they're being very, very, very careful with their guests. Thank you all so much. Cindy, thank you for the kind words. And yes, again, Irish in USA, thank you for the generous closing to this evening. That was really sweet of you. Um, happy Friday, guys. Enjoy the weekend. We'll be back soon. The next video that you're going to see from us is our speaking of all inclusives. It is a comparison of cruise versus all inclusives and what might be right from you with photos and video from our February trip, Junior and I and my mom's February trip to the Hyatt Ziva in Los Cabos, which is an all inclusive and we compare it to cruising. It's going to be a fun video. So you'll probably see that within the next week or so. Kleber, hello from Brazil. Thank you, Dave. We will stay cool. Steven from Down Under, thank you. Mike and Cheryl, thank you as always. Everyone who's joined us tonight, we appreciate you all so much, so much. And I know it's hard to say this because we're not really heading out on the high seas yet, but until next time, we'll see you on the high seas. <laughs> Cruise around the week. <laughs>
Hey, click me to subscribe.